Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study about uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, its uh, transmission, pathophysiology, then stages of pulmonary tuberculosis, its risk factors and symptoms. Now, tuberculosis is also known as TB. It's a bacterial disease that is caused by the bacteria Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now, this bacteria is also known as tubercle bacilli. Now, TB is a very widespread disease. Now, Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a respiratory pathogen. And this pathogen primarily affects lungs. And the disease is known as pulmonary TB. Now, pulmonary refers to lungs. Now, a very special feature of this disease is this, that an individual that is affected with tuberculosis can be symptomatic or uh, the person can be asymptomatic. Now, besides lung, when the tuber uh, tubercle bacilli affects other organs of the body, like for example, bones, then uh, central nervous system, urogenital tract, digestive system, kidneys, etc. That is organs uh, that are present outside the lungs. Then the TB is known as extra pulmonary TB. Now, uh, besides pulmonary and extra pulmonary TB, another type of life threatening and potentially fatal TB is the miliary TB. Now, in this TB, millet size tuberc tuberculosis lesions are seen in all the organs of the body. Now, it occurs when a large number of tubercle bacilli, they reach the blood. Now, once these bacilli, they reach the blood, they travel through the bloodstream and they spread the bacilli throughout the body. So, that results in the miliary tuberculosis. Uh, now, let's study transmission of tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis is a communicable disease as it spreads from one person to another person. Now, tuberculosis is an airborne disease and uh, it spreads through the air. Now, very important to understand that uh, when an infected sick person of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis showing the symptoms of tuberculosis, now when this person coughs or this person sneezes or shout or talk, the droplet of mucus or the droplets of saliva carrying Mycobacterium tuberculosis are expelled in the air. Now, these droplets, they remain suspended in the air for hours and these droplets of mucus or saliva carrying the bacteria are termed as droplet nuclei. Now, transmission of uh, TB occurs when a healthy individual inhales these uh, droplet nuclei and they reach the alveoli of lungs. So, this is how mycobacterium tuberculosis is transmitted from a symptomatic infectious individual to a healthy individual. Uh, now, let's discuss pathophysiology of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Now, tuberculosis is a long-lasting, often a progressive disease that may get worse over time if it is not treated adequately. Now, the characteristic lesions of uh, tuberculosis or the characteristic wounds of uh, tuberculosis that are uh, formed in the lungs are termed as granulomas. And thus, TB is defined as a chronic granulomatous disease. So, look at these figures. Now, uh, it shows transmission of uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis from a symptomatic sick individual to a healthy individual. Now, after the transmission, in around 70% of individuals, this uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis does not infect the lungs. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is destroyed because of the good immunity of the individual. But in around 30% of the individuals, these bacilli, they reach the alveoli. 
so these bacilli they reach the alveoli now when these bacilli they reach the alveoli this causes activation of innate immune immunity of the individual so uh, there is activation of innate immunity and because of the activation of this immunity macrophages uh, that is the first line of defense macrophages they reach the alveoli so this is the diagram that shows uh, macrophages so macrophages they reach the alveoli and they engulf the bacteria so all these macrophages are here so these macrophages they engulf the bacteria now along with macrophages other immune cells like uh, neutrophils dendritic cells natural killer cells they also reach the site of infection now purpose of all these immune cells uh, is to destroy the bacteria now macrophages release cytokines like uh, interleukin 1 interleukin 6 tumor necrotic factor alpha now these cytokines stimulate the arrival of t cells b cells so more number of macrophages and t cells and b cells they reach the site of infection so t cells b cells they also reach the site of infection in the alveoli of the lungs now immune cells organize themselves in a spherical structure around a tubercle bacilli and this prevents the spread of bacilli outside the lesion so in other words we can say that the bacteria is locked in the lesion and the lesion or the wound is termed as granuloma now initially this granuloma is formed in the lower or in the middle lobe of the lung just below the pleura and it is termed as gone focus now macrophages uh, can spread this infection to the local lymph nodes so uh, gone focus along with the infected lymph node is termed as gone complex now tb at this stage is called as primary tb now primary tb is a stage uh, when individual is infected for the first time and there is development of gone focus and uh, there is development of gone complex in the lungs now primary tb is non symptomatic or it is non infectious it cannot be transmitted from an infectious person uh, it cannot be transmitted from this infected person to a healthy person because all the bacilli they are locked inside the granuloma so this is primary tb now immune cells of the granuloma release inflammatory mediators to destroy bacilli and during the process a number of bacilli as well as macrophages are destroyed so uh, the central part of this granuloma becomes soft like cheese due to the necrosis or due to the death of macrophages and the bacilli and this granuloma is uh, termed as caseous granuloma now very important to understand and to remember here is this this that even though most of the bacteria are killed but some bacilli remain alive in the center of this granuloma so now there are uh, three possibilities 1 2 and 3 now first in uh, most of the cases the bacilli remains dormant the bacilli remains dormant and does not multiply now this is termed as latent tuberculosis the patient does not show symptoms of the disease and the patient cannot transmit the disease now these bacilli they can remain dormant throughout the life of the individual now in the second case uh, the disease is completely eradicated and the granuloma heals uh, on its own now in around 5 to 10% of the cases due to the reduced immunity of the patient or because of the immunosuppression uh, this primary infection it further progresses uh, that means there is progression of the primary tuberculosis 
Now very important to understand that in uh, 5 to 10 percent of the patients with the latent TB, now if these patients are not adequately treated and the patient becomes uh, immunocompromised at any stage of life, then the dormant bacilli, they reactivate themselves and they start multiplying. That means there is reactivation of the dormant bacilli. So, uh, there is a reactivation of this uh, latent TB. Uh, now, progression of uh, uh, primary TB or uh, the reactivation of this uh, latent TB causes liquefaction of the central portion of the caseous granuloma. Now, the bacteria they actively multiply and the granuloma uh, disintegrates. That means the granuloma gets ruptured as you can see over here. So, this is the rupturing of granuloma and mycobacteria they are set free in the lungs. Uh, the infection spreads throughout the lungs and therefore, when the patient uh, cuffs or, the, or when the patient uh, talks, mycobacteria they are released, they are expelled in the air causing transmission of the disease. Now, this uh, TB is termed as the active TB. So, active TB or secondary TB is caused due to active multiplication of dormant bacilli of latent tuberculosis. Now, during acti active TB, the patient is symptomatic as well as uh, the patient can transmit the disease. Now, if these bacilli they migrate to other organs outside the lungs. This causes extra pulmonary TB. And if these mycobacteria, they enter the blood, they can cause miliary TB. So, this is the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis. Uh, now, let us uh, uh, review the three stages of pulmonary TB. Uh, there are three stages of pulmonary TB. First is the primary TB, then latent or dormant TB and the third is the active or secondary TB. Now, uh, this is the primary TB. Now, primary TB occurs when a person gets infected for the first time with mycobacterium tuberculosis and there is formation of granuloma. But here, the person does not show the symptoms and here the disease cannot be transmitted because the bacilli they are confined to the granuloma. Then latent TB occurs when the bacilli they become dormant, bacilli they cannot multiply. So neither symptoms are produced nor the disease is transmitted. So this stage is called as a latent TB. Then active tuberculosis occurs when due to immunosuppression dormant bacilli of the latent tuberculosis they become active, they start multiplying, uh, the granuloma gets ruptured, uh, this spreads the infection throughout the lungs and the active TB is also known as secondary TB. Now this TB is symptomatic and this is also transmittable. So these are the three stages of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, primary TB, latent TB and active or secondary TB. And now let's study risk factors that uh, increase the chances of getting infected with pulmonary tuberculosis. Now as tuberculosis is an airborne disease and mycobacterium tuberculosis remains suspended in air for several hours uh, crowded places and inadequate ventilation increases the risk of infection with mycobacterium tuberculosis. Then proximity that is closeness and duration of contact with the individual with the infected individual are other important risk factors. Now more is the closeness with the patient, uh, more is the duration of contact with the patient, higher is the risk of infection. Then malnutrition, malnutrition impairs immunity of the body and increases the risk of tuberculosis. Now, majority of the individuals who become infected with mycobacterium tuberculosis, they never develop clinical disease with symptoms because of their good immunity. But uh, immunocompromised individuals like uh, for example, HIV infected individuals, then uh, individuals uh, uh, of patients of uh, organ transplant 
who take uh, immunosuppressant drugs, then uh, uh, diabetes mellitus, then uh, severe kidney disease, then children, uh, old age uh, people, they quickly catch infections and they develop Mm, tuberculosis because of the weak immunity. Then another risk uh, factor is the substance, is the, uh, substance abuse. Now consumption of alcohol, drugs, tobacco, cigarette smoking, all these things they cause uh, malnutrition. They impair the immunity of body and they increase the risk of uh, catching tuberculosis. Then uh, inadequate health uh, care services either because of pov poverty or because of uh, non-availability uh, non -availability of the health care services. Now this prevents the cure of uh, tuberculosis at early stage. Now in addition to this health care workers, uh, health care workers who assist in procedures like uh, bronchoscopy, suctioning, then preparing the sputum smears, developing bacterial cultures. Uh, these people are at a high risk of getting infected with tuberculosis if proper precautions are not undertaken. Then people traveling to high TB uh, incidence regions like uh, for example Southeast Asia, Africa etc. So uh, these are the risk factors that increase the chance of getting infected with uh, tuberculosis. Uh, now let's study symptoms of uh, tuberculosis. Now clinical symptoms of uh, pulmonary tuberculosis develop very slowly. And these include uh, generalized malaise that is feeling of sickness, fatigue uh, that is tiredness, then persistent productive cough that is cough with the mucus that lasts for around 3 weeks or even longer. And uh, many a times blood also comes in this cough. Now that time uh, the symptom is termed as hemoptosis that is uh, blood in the cough. Then uh, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis can also cause chest pain, anorexia that is loss of appetite, weight loss. Uh, the patients of uh, tuberculosis are found to be very thin, they lose a lot of weight. Then another symptom is the shortness of breath causing difficulty in breathing, then fever, chills and night sweats. Now symptoms of uh, extra pulmonary tuberculosis depend on the site or the organ that is infected by the um, bacteria. Now infection of the central nervous system uh, causes inflammation of the membranes or inflammation of the meninges of the brain and spinal cord and this is termed as tubercular meningi meningi uh, meningitis. Now symptoms of tubercular meningitis are uh, headache then uh, abnormal behavior, convulsions. Now spread of TB to the lymph nodes can cause uh, lymph adenitis that is the uh, inflammation of the lymph nodes. Now TB uh, infection in genitourinary tract shows uh, symptoms like uh, uh, hematuria that is blood in the urine. Then uh, inflammation of epididymis that is the uh, epididymitis. Then uh, infertility can also be caused. Now, uh, mycobacterial tuberculosis infection in the liver causes uh, hepatitis. Now, if the heart gets uh, infected, it can cause endocarditis, that is inflammation of endocardium. Endocardium is the innermost lining of the wall of the heart. Now, infection can spread to other organs also like bones, skeletal muscles, uh, causing for example TB of the spinal cord. So this is in brief on types of uh, tuberculosis, then uh, pathophysiology and stages of pulmonary tuberculosis, its uh, risk factors and symptoms. If you find the video useful, kindly like, subscribe and share this video. Thanks for watching this video.